Hello everyone, how are you today? I am Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Dr. Education. Welcome back to my channel. As you know, I make videos about health and healthcare topics and all my videos are directly referenced from the internationally accepted US National Medical Library. So today I'm going to talk about another important topic, very, very uh, commonly asked, psoriasis, right? Psoriasis, what is psoriasis? Why it happens? It's very common in many people and increasingly common these days because of the sun and uh, bad environment exposures, etc., etc., etc. And a lot of people are having these problems in the skin. And it's very difficult to treat. So we are going to understand this problem today. So stay with me. Okay? If you want to know about health and have health concerns, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified about all upcoming videos. So guys, what is, so guys, what is psoriasis? Psoriasis is basically a skin condition where your skin becomes red and irritated because of irritation and redness sometimes slowly your skin will get thickened so there will be a thick red and well described patch on the skin which will slowly become flaky and then silver and white scales will form on that right so the basic reason is because of uh, skin irritation and redness because of this irritation and redness, all these things happen. First, there will be thickening of the skin. The skin will become thick. And then uh, well demarcated patches, uh, flakes and silvery white scales will form. Right? These patches are called plaques. Right? And psoriasis is very common. Very common. Anyone can have it. Anyone can develop it. But it most often begins in the ages of 15 to 35 one five to three five years and uh, it increases as people get older right and it is not contagious it is not a transmittable disease like i said it is because of skin irritation not because of an infection not because of a virus not because of anything else right that means you are free to touch each other you are not uh, going to transmit it to them or people are not going to get it from you or you are not going to get it by touching another person who has psoriasis all right so don't worry about that psoriasis but it does seem to be passed down through families right it is genetic so your skin might have a genetic predisposition to get irritated easily right that is one thing so uh, what, what is the basic see normal skin cells basically grow deep inside the skin and rise to the surface right it is growing under the skin and slowly they rise to the surface right about after a month right once a month right every 28 days this cycle happens right like I, like I have explained it before and when you have psoriasis what happens is this process takes place in days rather than weeks so it becomes faster in that small area so think about it how it will happen obviously that skin will become thickened because losing of the skin skin is not getting lost from there but it is being created very fast because of irritation this results in the dead skin layer building up right on the skin surface and because of this there is formation of these scales right you're getting my point so this is the basic problem, the baseline problem in psoriasis. And obviously it is because of skin irritation and redness. So there has to be some triggers, some triggers of causing an attack of psoriasis, making it, uh, you know, difficult to treat because until and until and unless the, because until and unless this irritation is removed, right? This process will not stop, right? So, some kind of things can actually irritate your skin. There, were, there might be triggers like dry air, dry skin, injury 
to the skin due to cuts, burns, insect bites or uh, other types of skin rashes, right? Stress, too little sunlight, too much sunlight. Yes, this is the dilemma here. It is actually one of the reasons. And then infections, some kind of infections like bacterial viral infections which are happening somewhere else like a throat infection, uh, uh, you know, respiratory tract, uh, upper respiratory tract infection. They can have this kind of reaction on the skin. So all these are triggers, right? Psoriasis can be worsened in a people who has a weak immune system including those who have HIV AIDS, right? <clears throat> so, some people with psoriasis will also have arthritis, which is basically called psoriatic arthritis. That means this problem has also irritated their joints and joints are also swollen. In addition, people with psoriasis have increased risk of uh, many diseases like fatty liver, cardiovascular disease, and other such heart problems and even stroke for that matter. So how will you know if you have psoriasis, right? Because psoriasis can appear uh, slowly or even sometimes very suddenly also. And many times it can come and go away, come back and go away off and on. It can appear like that. So you might even not even know that you have psoriasis, right? See, the main symptom of this condition is irritated red flaky plaques on the skin. And it is most commonly seen in the elbows, elbows, knees, middle of the body, but they can appear anywhere, including the scalp, in the head, palms, in the soles, soles of the feet, and even the genitalia. So yes, it can happen there. And what will happen? This, all these areas, wherever it is happening, the skin will be itchy, right? Dry. It will covered with scaly areas which are silvery or flaky, right? It might be red or pink in color. It might be raised and thick, right? Sometimes uh, symptoms can also include, like I said, uh, psoriatic arthritis. So joint pain, tendon pain or aching can also happen. Nail changes can also happen, right? Uh, thickening of the nails, yellow, brown colored nails. Sometimes there are dents. In the nails or a lifting of the nail from the skin under underneath this can happen and people with psoriasis can also have severe dandruff on their scalps too yes that can happen and if we talk about psoriasis clinically they are described in five types of lesions basically yes first is erith erythrodermic right erythrodermic means the skin is red and very intense covered in large covering a large area right skin is red and very intense so that's why erythrodermic red and erythro is same right and then second is gutted 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 psoriasis means small pink red spots appearing in the skin and this form is often linked to the uh, throat infection Right, especially in children. So cut it is small pink red spots in the skin. Third is inverse. Inverse means skin is red, irritated, but it occurs in the armpits, in the groin region, in between the in between these overlapping skin. Overlapping skin is needed. Right? Rather than the more commonly exposed knees and elbows. So inverse is this overlapping skin areas. Alright. Then fourth is plaque. Plaque is basically or plaque. Plaque is basically a thick red patches of the skin which are covered by flaky silvery white scales right almost same i know i understand but this is the most common type of psoriasis plaques which we can see on the hands and the fifth type is pustular pustular is when uh, psoriasis get infected or pus gets filled inside the irritated skin right then yellow pus filled blisters or pustules will uh, will be there surrounded by red and irritated skin right so basically these are the five types of psoriasis so your doctor can diagnose this condition straight away by looking at your skin a dermatologist can just like do that and if you want to confirm then a skin biopsy a small part of the skin can be taken out to rule out other possible conditions and if you have joint involvement then joints x-ray can also be done 
Now let's come on to the treatment. The goal of the treatment of this condition is to control the symptoms and prevent infection because it's an irritation. The irritation has to be stopped. The triggers has to be found and have to be stopped. Right? So what options you have? You can apply skin lotions, ointments, creams, shampoos on your head. Right? These are all included in the topical treatment. Topical treatment which you apply on the external surface. Then there are some other options like pills and injections that affect the body's immune system, right? But this will not just affect your skin, this will affect the whole body. There is a systemic thing, body-wide treatment, right? But there is another treatment called phototherapy, right? In which ultraviolet light is used to treat psoriasis, right? So let's try and look at each of these things, right? First is the topical treatment. Most of the times, this uh, topical treatment is the first line uh, treatment and uh, corticoid, cortisone creams on ointment uh, are used, steroid creams basically, other anti-inflammatory creams and ointments are used. That's why sandalwood oil is also good because it's a natural occurring steroid. So sandalwood oil applied on the psoriasis uh, lesions will give you relief. So will uh, simple quality corticosteroid cream will give you relief, right? Then uh, sometimes creams on ointments that contain coal tar or anthraline can also give relief and creams which are there to relieve, remove the scaling right if you want to remove the scale basically this is very very thick skin so thick skin has to be exfoliated so salicylic acid so salicylic acid cream or lactic acid creams are used right and then if you have dandruff dandruff shampoo has to be used over the counter or prescription and moisturizers has to be used to prevent dry skin if dry skin is causing the itching you know irritation then prescription medication can also contain vitamin d or vitamin a for the healthy uh, skin growth so that the skin becomes you know healthy it's not dry it's uh, uh, you know it has oxygen it's basically nourishment right so these are all uh, basic topical treatments right then if things don't get control on this then we go on to systemic treatment medication right only in very severe psoriasis this will be done in this case full body immune system suppression has to be done by uh, giving you medications which are actually very serious medications has to be given under the supervision of a doctor. These medications are similar to autoimmune disease medications like we discussed already in rheumatoid arthritis, in uh, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, so all these things, right? And these include methotrexate, cyclosporine, then sometimes retinoids are given such as acid retin, acid retin which is also given. And there are many newer drugs called biological agents biologics which are uh, also available these are used when other treatments do not work phototherapy is another line of treatment which for some people they can go for this which is safe and it can be very effective right this treatment is which in which your skin is carefully exposed to ultraviolet light it may be given alone or it may be given after uh, you take a small medication which makes your skin more sensitive to light, right? It can be applied or taken, right? Phototherapy uh, for psoriasis can actually be given as uh, ultraviolet UVA or UVB light separately, right? So if all these treatments don't work and if at all there is an infection, pus formation in your psoriatic lesions, then your doctor can prescribe you antibiotics also or else no. Right. So lastly, let me give you some home remedies, right? How you can actually take care, live with this condition, prevent it to occur again or, uh, you know, just suppress it, right? First and foremost, take a daily bath or shower and do not scrub, do not scrub, scrub your skin too hard because this can actually irritate and trigger an attack. Oatmeal can be used, oatmeal baths basically can be used it, it is very soothing and may help loosen these scales right you can use over the counter oatmeal bath products also which are available or you can just milk or you can just mix one cup of oatmeal that is 240 ml of oatmeal uh, into a tub of warm water and then bath with it keeping your skin clean and moist and avoiding 
the specific trigger which is irritating your skin according to you will help reduce the number of flares to a great extent right sunlight can be of very help sunlight may help your symptoms to go away and be careful not to get sunburned but that's the uh, precaution you need to do some or the other relaxation or anti stress techniques right the link between stress and flares is important although it's not very well understood but the link is very deep so whenever you are stressed the flares will increase right remember this so a healthy lifestyle positive attitude is very important right and uh, you can talk to a dermatologist if you are having severe problems and if you are not getting treatment for this condition and if treatment is not working then complications can happen and the prognosis basically is that it is a lifelong condition that means your skin will always have the tendency to uh, flare up another scale so you have to have to be cautious you have to change your lifestyle that is the only way you have to take a lot of good vitamins healthy you know fruits vegetables a lot of water you have to take a lot of antioxidants right through these fruits right a lot of different anti not just one thing right that's the most important message here it's a lifelong condition has to be managed triggers have to be managed you know you have to control all your uh, these uh, signs and symptoms triggers and get treatment whenever it's needed right and remember it might come again so don't worry about it but with proper treatment it will not affect your overall health and be aware that there is a strong link between psoriasis and other health diseases like heart disease so get tested regularly get tested regularly get a health checkup once a year for all these diseases heart disease and other diseases so that you know if these diseases are getting you know any uh, formation in your body get are getting formed in your body right so talk to your doctor talk to your dermatologist if you talk about prevention there is no known way to prevent psoriasis only thing is keeping the skin clean moist and avoiding triggers is the best way daily uh, you need to have a good skin care routine no too much irritation don't use a lot of uh, chemicals on your skin don't use a lot of scrubbing right don't irritate your skin don't go out in extreme weathers right eat a well balanced healthy diet that's all you can do right this problem is a lifelong problem it's also called plaque psoriasis psoriasis vulgaris gutted psoriasis pustular psoriasis and plain simple psoriasis so this is all about psoriasis hope you got some helpful information through this video if you did then don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon and share this video with all your friends family and colleagues because knowledge is always worth sharing i am dr paramjit i am a consultant physician and cardiologist in yashoda super speciality hospital in hyderabad nagar delhi ncr and you are watching doctor education i'll see you next time stay connected stay healthy